next variable. Let's modify its height value to be 100 instead of the default 25. It worked as expected. I'll change the wire color for this object so that we can see it in the other viewports better. Let's make it blue. There. Now let's put a band modifier on this box using scripting. Since I don't know what the constructor is for this modifier, I'll just look it up in the help file. So open a max script online help and see what it says for band the modifier. Just as with the box, this is the actual help page for the modifier, the band modifier, and here is the name for the constructor for this. It's band. So I'll say my band equals band. I'll use the default parameters for this construction. But where did this modifier go? As we ran it, it did return some value. Obviously this modifier is not on the box yet. That's because we didn't apply it yet. All we did was constructing a modifier then putting that into a variable my band. This modifier only exists in MaxScript's memory, nowhere else in the scene. It's a fully capable modifier though. It already has all the parameters a band modifier would have. It's just not applied to any, any of the objects yet. But let's see what happens if we say show properties my band and run this line. As you can see we get the expected printout of all the band modifier properties. So let's change the band angle a little bit. My band dot band angle equals 90. <laughs> so what do we have now? We have a band modifier that's held in the my band variable. It has its band angle set to 90 degrees. But to actually see this yet abstract entity in action, we'll have to apply it to our box. To do this, we'll have we'll use an appropriate function, in our case the add modifier, add modifier. Let's check in the help file what parameters this function will expect from us. So we're looking up add modifier. There it is. Looking for the modifier common properties. And where are you? Yeah, there it is. So our function will expect three parameters. Two of them are required and the third one is an optional because as you can see here the brackets show that this is an optional parameter. The first one is a node. That's the node that we want to apply our modifier to. This name, node, well it covers all the object objects that you can actually select in the max viewports. This could be geometric objects or helpers, cameras, lights, etc. A box or a tape helper would be a node, but modifiers, controllers or materials would not be. So whenever a function expects a node, that will be an actual object. The second parameter for this function is a modifier. A modifier to apply that will be added to the given node's modifier stack. Let's skip this third optional parameter for now. Uh, we don't really need it in this case. So if we wanted to add this band modifier to our box, we would need to say add modifier my box my band. The function results in OK, meaning it didn't fail. And we can also see the result in the viewports. We have already set the modifier to have a 90 degrees angle band, so you can instantly see when the modifier is applied. Let's try to run this function again and analyze what happens. So we are just rerunning the same line basically. You can see on the modifier panel that the same modifier has been added to the object stack a second time. That's because through using the myband variable, we have added the same modifier entity that we created earlier.